lives are we supposed to start the podcast? Ready? One, two, three. Oh, that was bad. One, two, three. Still bad. I can't hear. Is it bad? Is it bad as I think? Just try again. One, two, three. Okay, we're much better. Judge, Judge Judy Diana is here. She is one of the greatest legal minds of this country. Which is the biggest crock of shit I've ever heard, but go ahead. What have you had it with? I've had it with people that chew their food with their mouth open. It's the worst. It's so gross. It I is. remember even as kids, we would be like, chew with your mouth closed. Yeah. But you can't say that to an adult. Yeah. I remember, did you ever ask somebody, do you like seafood? Well, I don't, and I can see yours in your mouth. <laughs> I mean, it's gross. And I just had it happen the other day, and I was horrified. You know who does this sometimes? Who? Josh. But you can tell him to shut his fucking mouth. I'm constantly like, what are you doing? Like, he's just talking to me, full-blown talking, and he, che- he will chew the food towards the front of his mouth. And so, so you kind of see it. Yeah. Ooh. And, and it's open. And I'm just like, for somebody who cares so much... <laughs> About Who's their outfits. So obsessed with their appearance. Their pubic hair. Their hair changes three outfit changes in one day. Where's an outfit with socks and shoes and a belt to lounge around the house? Weird. And he sometimes chews the food with his mouth open. And the only thing I can take this back to is he was, you know, born and raised in rural Oklahoma. And I think that that's still. That's one of the things that's still alive in him. Yeah, that he's trying to cover up with the outfits, but you can't cover that shit up if you're eating with your mouth open. You can be dressed. You can have $5,000 worth of clothes on. Like you're the biggest hot shit gentleman on the planet. Right. And you're chewing food with your mouth open. It totally, the gig is up. Yeah. Everybody knows you're just a straight up country bumpkin. Had it. Had it. with you Had it. Okay, let me tell you what I've had it with. Okay. This is a new, you know how we like to identify things that are red flags? Yeah. Okay. Inspirational quotes, Bible verses and bios. Yeah. Red flag. I have a new one. Okay. Businesses that refer to themselves as a family. (laughs) That is so true. Uh Uh-huh. So true. It is a red flag. Right. If If you're doing business with somebody and they say, we're like a family. Turn around and run for your life. Yeah, because you know that means they all hate each other's guts and it's a toxic workplace. It means it, it's just like an Instagram feed where somebody, like some of the people that write the most horrific hate comments in our socials, I'll click their their bio. And the bio description says, live, laugh, love. <laughs> And it has like a sunflower and a peace symbol. <laughs> Live, laugh, love when you're not being a cunt. Yeah. And then it's just Cuntville, USA in the comment section, right? So I think any company that is trying to say that they are a family, right? They're covering up corporate greed, probably, right? Massive dysfunction. And they think if they roll out the name family in their business branding, Number one, I think that's kind of dumb because a lot of people don't like their families. More often than not, people don't like their family, at least extended family for sure. And the family is the one thing in life you can't pick. Right. You're stuck with these motherfuckers. Right. I mean, you're stuck with them forever. Right. And in business to then call a family, it's just like, oh my God, I've had it. I think it's a red flag. I agree. I've got my antennas up. (laughs) Immediately. I'm telling anybody that mentions to me that their business is a family, I'm going to turn around and get the fuck out. Run, run, run. It's an immediate GTFO. Yeah, I agree. That's a great point. And people, I feel like, are doing that more and more lately. I've had it. I've had it. Okay. I have a couple of things I found on the World Wide Web that I want to share with you. All right. Okay. One of them was posted by Doc Bastard. And he posts, it has taken medical science 200 years to advance humans to the point where people are so healthy and living so long that they can deny that science and medicine is what got us here. <laughs> it's a pretty valid point. Right. That, you, that <laughs> we're living so long right. that, that 
maybe there's boredom in longevity. Right. It, I would have to think. I really am one of those people that's like, if I hit 85, I want to call it. Because it's just straight downhill from 85, I feel like. You're bored. You can't drive. I'm surprised. You know, you talk about how old you are that all the time. I'm surprised you're not close to calling it now. I get, no, you've got bangs, then calling it. Bangs first, then call it. <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's just a s- steep slide downhill. And rapid first fire bangs. succession. Yeah. Yeah. The bangs are not knock, knocking on your door. I mean, they're running. Yeah, it's imminent. Imminent. Okay. The next one is just a little, you know, I really like immature humor. And so Insta Alcoholic on Instagram posts this meme and it says, when you wish your parents understood English when they named you <laughs> and has a picture of this gal and her name is McCunt Izichi. <laughs> <laughs> that cannot be right. Here it is. Read it and weep. McCunt Izichi. <laughs> McCunt Izichi. <laughs> My cat is itchy. Oh, that's bad. Oh, it's good. That's so sad to have to go into middle school with that name. Because they make fun of every name. Yeah, I really wasn't looking for empathy here. I was looking for how hilarious that is. No, it's horrible in every way. I know. I really got a good chuckle out of it. Everybody, welcome to I've Had It. This is Asshole Island. Yep. Pumps is the pretty one. She is the legal mind. I am the smart one and the supporting role here for her. And we have Kylie here with us. Kylie is our fearless producer. Kylie, what's going on on the World Wide Web regarding I've Had It? First off, I think we should shout out to our listeners because we posted the political typology quiz. Oh, yeah. That proved you were not a centrist. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Nor was Pumps. A little bit less. Right. And so everyone took it. Everyone's progressive left. I love that. Not one centrist in our followers. You know what? I our, love that. Our followers are smart. They are smart. Our listeners are smart. They're locked in. They are positive, smart, and cynical. And good looking. They're and good, good looking. looking. Gorgeous. I have yeah. noticed that uh-huh. at the uh, live shows. That Everybody's was, smart and attractive. I think that's great. We flip the script. They comment, they call me a cent- centrist, and then we say, well, what the fuck are you? Right. You take the quiz. That person was a faith and flag conservative. There's no doubt. That comment. Yeah. No doubt at all. Yeah. Okay. I have a five-star review I want to read you. Okay. okay. It's from Good Review, right? That's what their username is. I love when older gay women can have meaningful conversations with younger straight women. <laughs> I'm the straight one, right? You're the young straight woman. I'm the young straight woman. Yeah, see, our listeners are smart. <laughs> yeah. Sharp as so tax. Then you immediately, you were the old lesbian and I was the young straight. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I'll take it all day long. Okay, you want one more? Yeah. yeah. Okay, five-star review Okay, from I Love Gabby. These women are my mothers, lovers, sisters, confidants, and mortal enemies all at once. <laughs> You broadcast on the World Wide Web everything I think every goddamn day. It's so nice to see two people on their way, parentheses, very, very soon, out of this world, (laughs) manage to be this negative. I love you so much. I will never stop calling any and everything a goddamn racket because of y'all. By the way, pumps, I need help getting into the iCloud. Please, can you send your social ace out? (laughs) She will. She sure will. With zero fucks given. Immediately. Immediately. It's already out there on the World Wide Web. Your iCloud login? My iCloud login. And I gave it to that Amazon spam place. My yeah, that was that was smart. It's yeah. a security number. So. You know, I think that, you know, our listeners, you know, they're advocating for you and your security. I saw a lot of comments where people no, were. No, I know. It was obviously a bad move. I just missed it. It just went over my head. Yeah. Both times. Both times. Both times. And dare I say, there'll be more. You know, I wish I could say, pumps, don't be so negative. Don't beat up on yourself. There's not going to be more. But I do believe there will be more because I've been your friend for 20 plus years. And there's no question. I'm just gullible. That's just the bottom line. Okay. Before we welcome this next guest, I have to tell you guys, I'm going to start a new segment on the show. And I found... 
a listener sent me what is now my new favorite Instagram page on the planet. Here's the first one. It's the words are set on an image of the ocean with the waves. Okay. Okay. This too shall pass. And then some other bullshit will come and take its place. It never fucking ends. That's exactly right. That's an inspirational quote I can get behind. Love it. 100%. Okay. The next one. Have a panic attack. You've earned it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. Okay, here's, this is great. You're not the same person you were a year ago. You're even worse now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, absolutely one of my favorite things I've ever heard. It's great. Here's another one. You are exactly where you're supposed to be because you make terrible decisions. <laughs> have that tattooed on my face uh -huh. right there on my forehead after each hack that happens to you i can say you can go god i wish i would learn and say no pumps you are exactly where you're supposed to be you manifested all these of these decisions this. yes With terrible decisions yes um okay here's one prioritize your mental health avoid other people as often as possible oh true that totally do you want another one yeah okay one day you will find what you've been looking for, but by then you probably won't want it anymore. Oh my, is that not the truth? Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. How many <laughs> okay. times have you heard that? Last one. You did the best you could, which is pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been today's readings of disappointing affirmations. Yeah. All true though. Do you like that new segment? I do like it. Yeah, I I'm, like it a lot. I'm, I have been deep diving because this is the type of quote that people need to hear. Exactly. All the cliches and all that. It's yeah. just platitudes. It's obnoxious. No one really feels better after they read Live, Laugh, Love. Nobody's like, you know what? The, I'm just going to embrace that and go forth I and disagree. conquer. I disagree. You think they do? They do. They do. It's a, It's like... A, they're putting on, you know, just a layer of denial. It, it, it offers them a layer of denial. But I think they do feel better or you wouldn't see so many pages full of them, but it's a Band-Aid. All of those positive affirmation quotes that aren't rooted in reality are just Band-Aids that people use. So like if I totaled my car and somebody said, live, laugh, love, I would just be like invigorated and just... I'm just going to get a new car and it's going to be great. And I'm not going to worry about all the other stuff. Like, you think people really do that? I think, I think a lot of people, like I've met people and they're like, well, you know, it was just, they, they believe that there's a reason for everything, that everything happens for a reason. They believe that. And this is the inspirational quote world. You know, these <laughs> quotes help them because I don't think everything happens for a reason. I think there's just a lot of fuckery, coincidence, good luck, bad, bad luck. luck. You know, I think a lot of people do a lot of negative things and make a lot of negative choices that lead to horrible prizes at the end of that. Some and I know that make, because I've done it numerous and, times. And some people make good choices and good decisions and they lead to great prizes. But um, everything happens for a reason is so dismissive about all of the human suffering that is happening in the world. I think it's just one of the, oh, you know what else gets me? What? It's a God thing. <laughs> we do send that back and forth quite a bit, though. What? You and I do. It's a God. It's well, a yeah, God. tongue in cheek. <laughs> yeah, pumps will send me a text like, can you believe that happened? And I'll respond, it's a God thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Just can't explain. It's just a God thing. I guess I'm just so cynical. I just find it hard to believe that that would really change your attitude. Like seeing an a, an affirmation or a positive quote, that that would make me like, I'm just going to change everything I think and how I feel because of that. I think there are some people that, and I'm not even knocking what I'm about to say, that they're in complete despair. Right. And they read some of those things and it's they're looking for anything, anything to cling on to, to alter the despair momentarily. And I think sometimes those prove to do that. Now, there are the people that traffic in these 24-7, 365, which is the red flag 
of all red flags. Yeah, because I think there have been times when I've been so desperate and downtrodden yes. that something like that, I'd be like, okay, it's momentary. Yes. This isn't forever. But just to traffic in it, I just find that absurd. It's the inspirational quote, trafficking all the time. And you know what's interesting? I'm going to revisit this. If you go to our like most controversial grenades that Kylie's dropped on social media, where people are just bickering back and forth in the comment section, and you click the most hateful ones, their bios, it is cupcakes, rainbows, and sunshine. <laughs> it is bio fraud. And then when you look at the post, they are trafficking. They are inspirational, quote, traffickers. Right. They're masquerading on the internet in their bios as positive people. And then it just, you know what? They can't help it. They it's can't. rip ass. They are ass rippers in the <laughs> comment section. That is kind of funny, though. Yeah. No, I love the uh, disappointing affirmations. Kylie, do you like those? I love those. Have you seen that account? Uh-uh. I can't believe you've seen something on social media that Kylie hasn't. I'm very impressed. Listen, Kudos to listen, you. Smart one. I'm the smart yeah. one. I'm chock full of great ideas. And so I just wanted to provide an alternate to the inspirational quote world. Love it. Love it. Okay. Listeners, you know what? Kylie, have you seen this? There's like a person on YouTube that is like, please, for the love of God, quit referring to us as the listener. We know that we are the listener. <laughs> so listen up, listener in the YouTube comment section. Just go find another podcast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that out of all the shit we say, that's the that's, controversial part. That's the one that gets her going. Yeah. The listener part. Can't make everybody happy. No, we can't. Nor do we want to. No. There's a lot of people we want mad at us. Oh, yes. A lot. Anyway, listener, I think we have to introduce our guest now. Our next guest is a drag queen because you know how much we love drag queens. Love them. And it pumps his advanced age. <laughs> she really, really enjoys the art of drag, don't you? I absolutely love it. Makes me so happy. And so our next guest, she is a model. She is a mogul, and her name is Gigi Good. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. You know, Pumps, every family has big get-togethers, lots of pressure and stress buying gifts, and sometimes you have to be around that crazy uncle, and that can completely stress you out. So I think this holiday season, I'm going to give a gift to myself with BetterHelp. I think that's a great gift to give to yourself because the holidays, with all the fun that they are, are very overwhelming. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of expectations to meet. So I think BetterHelp is a great gift to give yourself. I think it's a great way to learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. And those are especially important when you're around so many loved ones during the holiday season. What I love about BetterHelp is it's entirely online and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. In the season of giving, give yourself what you need with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Hadit today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Hadit. Pumps, I've got to tell you about my new holiday find that has made this crazy holiday season so much less stressful for me. Oh my gosh, what is it? Factor. Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service. It can help you eat well for breakfast, lunch, dinner with chef prepared, dietitian approved, ready to eat meals delivered straight to your front door. You'll save time and stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all of your holiday to do's. And you know what, pumps? Factor isn't just for dinner. Count on extra convenience any time of day with an assortment of 55 plus add-ons to suit various preferences and tastes. Choose from quick breakfast items, lunch to go, grab and go snacks, and ready to drink cold pressed juices, shakes, and smoothies. Listener, head over to factormills.com slash hadit50 and use code hadit50 to get 50% off. That's code hadit50 at factormills.com slash hadit50 to get 50% off your first order. 
Okay. Let's welcome to I've Had It, Gigi Good. <laughs> Gigi, welcome to I've Had It. How are you? Hi, I'm so good. I'm so excited. How are you doing? We're great. We're so excited you're here. You are first and foremost so gorgeous. It's ridiculous how gorgeous. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So Gigi, mm -hmm. tell us what you've had it with. You know what I've had it with? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> um, I just have to say I've had it with adulting and being an adult and all the responsibilities that come with being an adult. It's hard. It. It's hard. Yeah. Hard, it's hard. hard. My okay. gosh, it just gets on my last nerve. Let's break that down because I remember <laughs> specifically being little and thinking stuff like when I'm big, I'm going to do what I want. Right. And when I'm big, yeah. I'm going to do this and that. And I don't know why when we're younger or even in high school, it never really sinks in at any point how difficult adulthood is going to be until you are actually one. Uh -huh. And yet every adult that you come across tells you, you know, one of these days you're going to grow up and you're going to have to take responsibility. Yeah. And yet we're just dying to put on a suit and hit the big city. But uh, surprise, surprise, it's really hard. <laughs> yeah, I remember in college being like, I can't wait to get out of college and start my life and da, da 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 And now I look back and think that was the best, easiest time. Like high school and college are the easiest times of someone's life because you really don't have a ton of responsibility. Yeah, you have to go to school all day, but you don't have to, you know, financially, you're not responsible for yourself. You don't have like all the other things that go with adulting. Your like life, yeah. life partner decisions aren't bound forever oh, <laughs> yeah the good old times simpler times no I remember thinking the same thing except in college I couldn't get out fast enough I dropped out after two years and that's when I moved to Los Angeles and I was like I've I'm, I've had it I've had it with college actually <laughs> and um you know I just thought it was time to grow up and and I am thankful that I did that because if I hadn't I would have graduated during the pandemic on zoom um but and, and, you know, if I hadn't done that, it wouldn't led to me. It wouldn't have led me to where I am now. But gosh darn it. It's just, um, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the things that we have to pay for that really cause me like that I've had it with. And I'll give you a couple of examples of the stuff that really irritates me. Gasoline yeah. for a car. Yeah. I cannot stand going to pump it putting the gas in it and paying it because you don't get to hold it. You don't get to look at it. Mm -hmm. You only see your tank go up to full. And then it's only there for a brief moment before it starts dipping yeah. again. It is the most unrewarding money I spend. And also like car insurance. Yeah. Oh, my God. And somehow it just keeps changing. Like if you get in an accident, my God, you have to get more expensive car insurance. And I get in a lot of accidents. <laughs> Do you? Are you a bad driver? Actually, no, I'm not a bad driver. And I totally lied. I don't get in a lot of accidents. But my <laughs> car gets sideswept all the time because I live in L.A. And you yeah. can't just, God forbid, you park on Melrose without someone backing into you. Uh, so, you know, at this point, I've just stopped taking my car in to get repairs, which is another <laughs> thing that is very adult that I just don't want to have to do. Gigi, we want to play a game with you called Had It or Hit It. Oh, my God. Welcome to Had It or Hit It. I would hit it. Had it. Had it. I hit it every day, sometimes twice a day. Had it or hit it. Loud talkers on planes. Had it. What? <laughs> Had it. Especially red eyes. Oh, my gosh. I was on a red eye um, a couple months ago, I think. Yeah. And the, it, what, it was... Everyone was trying to sleep. The lights were out. Like, read the room. You don't. You do not need to be gabbing with your neighbor so loud. They didn't even know each other. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's obnoxious. You know, I think that people. One thing that I really had it with, and Pumps is an offender, and my husband is the offender, is oh, when. Oh no. Yeah, when you're in a hotel hallway. Yeah, the hallway of a hotel. Both Pumps and my husband raise their speaking voice about 10 octaves. <laughs> and I have to look at them and go, shh, people could be sleeping. Like, but I mean, I it, both of you, I don't know what it is when you yeah, both I've hit the, the hallway. Elevator, I'm like, oh, Kylie, I like yell something down to the <laughs> elevator. And Jennifer's like, what the fuck? And I'm like, oh, my God, you're so right. So bad. It's a bad <laughs> habit. So specific. 
Yeah, so it's because true. I, I, I've never really noticed that. I've been in bed in a hotel room and I hear these yak mouse out in the hallway. And yeah. I'm like, shut the fuck up. This is like a house and this mm-hmm. is the hallway of the mm-hmm. house. And if people are sleeping, you have to be quiet. And I mean, pumps and my husband both. Josh is every bit as bad as you. He just starts screaming. And I'm like, we were just on the <laughs> elevator and you weren't speaking that loudly. We were just in the room and you weren't speaking that loudly. There's something about the <laughs> hotel hallways that makes the volume yeah. go up. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's interesting. You just want to yell. You either want to yell or sprint down the entire <laughs> yes. hallway. Uh-huh, exactly. One of the two. Start running. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gigi, had it or hit it? Feather boas. Hit it. What? Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't like feather boas? Have you had it with feather feather boas? I, I love, love them. I love them too. When my daughter okay, was great. younger, every single book report that she did, she would put feather boas all over it. And so I just for like three years, I just had feathers. I love it. It was that. great. We always knew which That's ones a was great her. Touch. It was. Yes, that is that is a great touch. I think I think I mean, we've all grown up with like the chicken feather boas, which are great and timeless and will never leave, but then you kind of graduate from that to the little, like the skinny marabou. And um, since being a, a, a stage performer, a drag performer and being in this world, I've come to discover ostrich feather Ooh. boas, oh, which are nice. just like the utmost in luxury, so expensive, but just so luxurious. And they just make whatever you're wearing look so rich to me. I love an ostrich feather. Oh, I do. I love that. Sounds fancy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Had it or hit it bell bottoms? Ooh. Uh, um, oh, this is hard. I've gone through a lot of waves of bell bottoms. I have. The first time I wore bell bottoms was when I was about six years old and I dressed as Ozzy Osbourne for Halloween, which <laughs> I don't know that he ever wore bell bottoms, <laughs> but um, it was my excuse to wear a long wig. Uh, as a boy and my mom made the costume so I think she made me some bell bottoms so I wore those I've worn bell bottoms on drag race I don't I you know I'm gonna say hit it I'm gonna say hit it because you can always style a bell bottom I agree I especially like a bell bottom when they're like really tight at the waist and through the ass and the upper thighs, you know, and then with that slight flare that starts at the knee, like a slight mermaid, uh, not a full blown bell, but like when they're really tailored, I love that yeah. look with a blazer. I, I would rather like a boot cut type bell, you know, yeah. like I think right now that's where I'm at in my fashion journey. But I mean, <laughs> everything, the pendulum swings. Okay. Right. So the bell bottoms will be back with a vengeance. I agree. Had it or hit it, inspirational quotes. I don't know. I think if I had to choose between an inspirational quote and like uh, a kind of dark humor type quote, I would probably choose the dark humor agree. type quote. Totally yeah, agree. I don't, know. I'm, I don't need, I don't want inspiration in the form of words. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> No, I'm way more into dark humor. Yeah. That brings me more joy and inspiration than an inspirational quote, because I think somebody was smart enough to yeah. be that dark and that clever, and that inspires me. Yeah. But just yes. word salad positivity is such a jet stream of bullshit. I think it's yeah. a red flag. And you notice the people mm-hmm. that post these a lot, I have found, are the most fucked up people I know. <laughs> yes. It is, it is like a, a sort of self affirmation that you're not crazy. <laughs> exactly. Um, in fact, you are. And you know what, you know, what does so much better than just an inspirational quote. I find recently I've never been into this and I'm not sure if you are, but astrology, I've gotten really into astrology, just living in LA and you knowing I have a, a, my friend Harriet, she reads tarot cards and she does horoscopes and it's it, the horoscopes I've found if they are written from a point of just somebody with a completely clear spiritual mind. I found that those usually give me way more security and affirmation than like, you know, a cat hanging on a branch in a doctor's <laughs> office. I hate to to be the skunk at the garden party, Gigi, but I um, I've had it with horoscopes. <laughs> have you and astrology officially? yeah i think it's ah. it's old junk science that was used <laughs> that was invented before modern science 
And yeah, I think it's dated. I think if astrology inspires you, kind of like maybe some people are inspired by, you know, a religion or something that helps them mm-hmm. center themselves. I don't oppose that. But it's really I the think same thing, yeah. What I oppose is when people take astrology or religion and they present it as fact. I really had it with that. Or like live by it to like the nth degree, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I like to read it because I like to see how somebody's words maybe fits with my life. And that's honestly how you can you can pretty much make just about any horoscope fit with whatever right. you want it to. But I think it, for me, it's just a peace of mind thing. And um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just fun. It's more fun I than think inspirational it's fun. quotes. I think it's way more, more fun. fun. Way more fun than inspirational <laughs> quotes. But I remember one time I read like, Every horoscope that I found, I'm a Leo, but I read every single one to see if I could relate to it. And I could. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. All 12 signs because they are rather ambiguous, you know, but it's funny, like on, on social media, because our followers have gotten to know us well, and they'll be like, they'll find out when I was born, they'll be like, I knew you were a Leo. (laughs) That makes perfect sense. Yeah. You know? And so Mm -hmm. I, I just, I know a lot of people that were born around the same day that I was, and we have completely different personalities completely. Mm -hmm. And so I just, I don't know. I think sometimes people take that stuff a little bit too seriously, the same way that maybe they take an inspirational quote too seriously. And I've kind of, yeah, kind of had it with that, but I don't want, I don't want to demean your love of astrology. (laughs) If you like it, cause I like a bunch of crazy shit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so do I. I'm a crazy bitch. (laughs) You're amongst friends. Pumps, I have had it with walking around in shoes that have all the comfort of a bed of nails and my feet have had it. I mean, my whole body has had it from my perfectly manicured blown out hair to my pedicured toes. I have had it with foot pain. Well, I have a solution for you. Gravity to fire shoes. These shoes are so comfortable. You'll wonder if you accidentally stepped into a parallel universe where foot pain doesn't actually exist. In fact, all of you UCLA Medical Center did a double-blind study showing g shoes clinically reduce 85% of knee pain, which is the closest we're going to get to a perfect world. So listen up, listener. Here's the deal. We've got fabulously pain-free deal just for you. Use the code HADIT30 at checkout at gdefy.com. That code HADIT30 at gdefy.com, and you'll get $30 off orders of $150 or more. That's right, listener. We know you've had it with uncomfortable shoes and ridiculous prices. So don't wait. Head to gdefy.com. G D E fy.com and use code had it 30 for $30 off of orders of 150 or more at G D E F Y.com. You can thank us later. You know, pumps, when we started this podcast of ours, an online store was the furthest thing that either of us could even contemplate. How do we get that up and running? What's so overwhelming about it are all the little processes you have to go to to ship merchandise. You get the addresses, you get the labels, you get the boxes. How do you do that? It's overwhelming. Absolutely. Did you know that Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business? I don't think there's any way possible we could sell merch without our friends and partners at Shopify. Shopify also helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. That's 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms. And sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Listener, sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash had it, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash had it now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash had it. Had it or hit it, one night stands. Uh, had it. I've, I have never... I've never had a one night stand. Wow. And you're young. Yeah. I mean, never say never, but I mean, hopefully not. I'm, I'm enjoying where I'm at right now in my relationship, but uh, 
Yeah, I, I, to me, it's always scared. Like it's, it's terrifying to me because you never know what could happen. You never know if this person's going to be an ax murderer. Right. You know, um, they don't know if I'm an ax murderer. Right. So, and I am. So sometimes it just gets a little lost in the weeds there. But the dating apps, I think, are what scare me the most when it comes to those things. Because how can you talk to somebody for, like, exchange five messages back and forth and then just, like, fully trust that you can go over to their place where they live alone? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That scares me. Okay, this this has fascinated me forever. Okay, so I have always had a lot of um, gay male friends, like from my mm -hmm. late teens, early twenties on. And so one night, like right when Grinder came out, I'm at um, my friend's house, and we're all on the phone. I was like, "Give me that, give me that Grinder thing. I want to check it out." <laughs> so we're on it, and I'm like, "Okay, so just tell me, like, you just, you just." how big is your dick? Are you a top or bottom? Mm -hmm. And then you just go to their mm -hmm. house and then you open the yeah. door. Is it awkward? You know? Right. And he's like, no, we just, it's transactional and we just get down to business. But listen, Very. listen to this shit. So my friend, he does like a grinder type thing and he goes <laughs> to this house. He lives in LA at the time. He goes to this house and he goes in and there is a guy that greets him and everything's normal. And then they pull this other guy out of the closet and mm. he has on like a leather, like zip, like bondage. See, that's terrifying. Style mask mm -hmm. with the leather. It was all consensual. Like nobody is a yeah. hostage here. It's all adult consensual. <laughs> and he has on like the leather S&M things. And then like two other guys come out and they just have this like huge, like sex session. Okay. And he describes that to me, which I will spare everybody from hearing. A lot of you would probably like it. Some of you like pumps mm -hmm. would probably pass out. <laughs> probably pass but of out. course, I asked every pertinent question that a sick motherfucker would. And then Good. so then I'm like, OK, so when it ended, what happened after y'all were up to all of this nonsense? Like, was it normal? Does anybody feel weird? He goes, no, we just like all popped a beer and then walked on the front porch and smoked a cigarette. And I was like. Really? That's because like in the yeah. straight world, like yeah. there's so much awkward um mm -hmm. posturing for breeding and like <laughs> uh, uh, breeding. like breeding. sexual <laughs> like rituals. There's so much um so much more finessing and awkwardness. Mm -hmm. But in gay culture, it's all of that is gone. It's so much more yeah, transactional. It is. I think there's a lot more emotion tied to it, too, um, outside of, of the, the gay and queer community. Mm -hmm. I, you're right. It's, it's very transactional. And I, I mean, I think if you had talked to me about that story in college or in high school, I probably would have been absolutely shocked and bewildered. But now that I live here in L.A. and I'm pretty much exclusively friends with gay people. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is like a very regular totally. thing that happens. I mean, a, a lot of the parties that we host or attend will have like a dark room in it. Yes. Which, you know, it's just a room that you can go where all the lights are off. <laughs> wow. How about it? But yeah, for me, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a no for me. Wow. The dark but, you know, you're from Illinois. We're from Oklahoma City. And so it's you can understand because you like you said, if you were to hear this for the first time a few years ago, you would have been like, oh, my gosh. So the first time my friends yeah. told me this. But I'll say this because I don't want anybody to think we're prudes or judgmental of people yeah. that want to do this. And no kink shaming, obviously. Absolutely <laughs> not. If these it, it, they're all consensual adults, they don't have the puritanical hang ups and all of the the stuff that really tortures people about enjoying sex. I don't have any yeah. problem with it at all. But as a side listener, I find it kind of fascinating <laughs> because yeah, it is fascinating in the straight world. There's so much more like mating ritual that has to go on. You're right. It's the mm -hmm. mating ritual. There's a it's mating ritual right. thing that kind of has to go on. And when you first meet them, you're meeting the best version of themselves because what they mm -hmm. want to say is, hey, can I bend you over and fuck you right here? That's what they're thinking. Yeah. But they can't <laughs> yeah, yeah, say yeah. that to a woman. Maybe no, some women not. they could. So there's all this <laughs> awkward, you know, these awkward. I remember when we were younger and dating, there's all these just awkward exchanges awkward. that go on. Yes. 
totally yes. awkward. Well, you know, what's funny is that I think when it comes to uh, the progression of a relationship in the straight community goes, uh, you know, dinner, movie, and then you fuck in the gay community, you fuck first. <laughs> and, and then if that goes well, you get dinner, maybe. Right. And then if that goes well, that's when you start like going on an actual dating journey, but it's completely opposite. And somehow it makes perfect sense. Listen, I support the gay journey better because I here's think it's a better <laughs> idea. Here's why. I yeah. do not like to have sex on a full stomach. <laughs> Yes. Well, neither do the gays because they've only got one option. So, <laughs> you know, I, don't I think know. That's it's smarter. Business. I think get the find out if you're sexually compatible, get it right mm -hmm. out of the way, right out of the gates, because I'm at the age now where having dinner with somebody would probably be more awkward for me than actually having yes. sex with I them. I completely agree. Yes. I would rather but just then, have sex than go to dinner with somebody I don't like. <laughs> yes, yeah. It'd be yes. easier. Dinner. Cause if we had a great time, we can have dinner, but right. you know, it's, I, I think, I think about like people who are very strict about, uh, no sex before marriage. Oh, right. Yeah. And so imagine being with someone and like really, falling in love with somebody and, and saying, I'm going to wait until the Lord tells us that we can fornicate. <laughs> That's and so then, stupid. Uh, and then you have sex and imagine it's just awful. And it's now awful. you're married. Right. The first time's always awful anyway, the first couple times. Yeah. And then what if yeah. they have like, they're terrible, like a gyrator or just something horrible. I think that'd be terrible. I think I think <laughs> it's the worst, worst thing idea. on the planet. I have been deep diving in um, Mormon TikTok lately because I like oh my God. Yeah. And these Brigham Young University students are getting married uh -huh. after knowing each other four to six weeks. They're yep. like freshmen, sophomores in college for the sole reason that they can fuck. You know, it's not great sex. I mean, you know, so, no. and you know, it's the guys, you know, they think they're good sex and you know, they're fucking jackrabbit, horrible <laughs> yes. lays, horrible, yeah. horrible lays. And I feel so bad for these Mormons because they're out there. All they want to do is fuck, but they think That's they the have only to thing get they married can't do. first. Yeah, they can't do it. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, I think this gay, I think the gays are onto it. The timeline needs they to are. be sex first. And, and so I know so many, so many gays that I know are ex-Mormon. Really? Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's so, it's like such a common thing. I actually, I performed in Salt Lake City um, about a year ago and it was, um, I don't know if it's called Fleet Week, but oh. it's like essentially the Fleet Week for the Mormon, like it's just a, all these Mormon boys about to go on their missions, right? Oh. And so- and I was performing at a gay bar and it was the busiest night <laughs> of the year. Hold up, wait, pump the brakes. These guys are about to go on their mission and they were at the gay bar yep. the night before. Oh, that's yep. so good, this, Gigi. I mean, the same thing happens with, um, you know, okay. Let me open the floodgates to another thing. Let's do it. Since since coming out as trans and, and living my life as a woman fully, the the dating pool has completely flipped around. And now it's so like a lot of the people prior to, to dating who I'm dating now, like I would be on the apps and I'd be on Hinge, I'd be on Raya and I'd do all of that. And I'll, most of the people who would slide in would be, like military, soldier, um, like a lot of law enforcement, a lot of like very, uh, I don't know, just like that very stereotypical man's man type person. And it, it, it always seemed, oh, and athletes, so many athletes, my God, the athletes love the dolls. But <laughs> it, it was always very like, no, like, let, I don't want to take you out on a date, but please come over type thing. Um, so I don't know. It, it's like, it, it, if you're wondering what all of these uh, conservative men are doing behind closed doors, I know so many trans women who have slept with so many different politicians. And yeah. 
it's just like such a common thing that I'm, I, of course, I'm not surprised that these repressed homosexual young Mormon men are trying to get their rocks off the night before they have to leave for two years. Right. What? Two years. My God. But I'm here's something that I want to say that I think is such a shame that mm -hmm. homosexuals and trans people and people in the gay community, all LGBTQIA plus have to experience that needs to be said. So you're used as a polarizing force in political discourse to mm -hmm. placate to the Bible thumpers so they feel yeah. like they can attach themselves to purity culture and misogyny and capitalism and all the things because the drag queens and the trans people, that's what's fucking up society. But the underbelly, the underbelly of that is a lot of these people, and this was what surprised me when I got on my friend's grinders. How many of these men are married, heterosexually, mm -hmm. yeah. with children mm -hmm. that want to go yeah. have, you know, sex with somebody in the community and yeah. have naughty sex with somebody in the community, then drive home mm -hmm. to their wives, go to their church on Sunday, go vote for Donald Trump at the elections. Mm -hmm. And it's <laughs> it's such a double exploitation because yeah. I was as shocked as shit when I found out how many quote unquote straight men frequent grinder gay bars mm -hmm. and these other apps that are at church and, you know, trot out that, you know, they're probably the type of guys that do those family photos with the AR-15s, you know, fucked yeah, up right. or the, the kids oh, got them. Oh my God. Yeah. Crazy 100%. ass people. You know, they're probably doing some butt stuff. I mean, you just know they it. They are. <laughs> and, it's, and, and at a certain point, it's like, I think the initial reaction, especially from within the community is, is kind of hatred and disgust towards that. But I feel really bad for these men. Uh, because clearly they have lived a life that is so repressed and, yeah. you know, their beliefs have been just like pummeled into them week after week, month after month, year after year. And they, and now it's, it's really led to, it, it's almost been forced out of them. Like they have to, they have to get this off their, out of their system in order to feel like they are of sound mind. It, I don't know. I just feel bad for them. I'm You're a better like, person God. than me because I think they're a bunch I, of fucking uh, hypocrites. I see your point. Don't get me wrong. I have a lot of fuel and hatred towards these hypocrites, but I can't help but feel yeah. bad for the way they were raised. Like, I'm sorry that you were raised by who you were raised by. Yeah. That, and I think, I think that you're a better person, a better person than we are. Gigi. Yeah. <laughs> I do. Oh, that's sweet. Well, Gigi, thank you so much for sharing this. You are absolutely beautiful. Yes, you are. Thank Thanks, you Gigi. So much. All right. See you later. Bye. What I love that has been happening lately is like JVN, Gigi Good, when we are playing Had It or Hit It. They're tortured. And I stump them. <laughs> Bell bottoms, bangs. I love you that. Know, and they really want to answer it really mindfully. They do. And thoughtfully. And they're so tortured by which way to go on it. And I think this is going to be like our new thing is we're making Had It or Hit It. How do we torture, torture people. these people the most? We would have more fun the more tortured they are. It's so good. It's just the little things, Pumps. It's the little things. All right, listener, thank you so much for joining us. Please go give us five stars on Apple. Follow us on Patreon. Send a voice memo to Instagram and check out the Hot Shit Tour. The link is in the bio. Pumps, tell them. We will see you next Tuesday or Thursday or both. Bye.